Ew. Oh, no, it's still not working. Oh, wait. Say, somebody say something? Yeah, still not working. Excellent. Only... Why... Why are you the way you are? OBS? There's no reason for you to be doing this. <laughs> Nuts.com. Oh, great. And... That's the first thing we got when we, <laughs> the audio came back. <laughs> Nuts.com. That's an excellent start to the evening. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> They're not going to suck themselves. Nutritional. Uh, oh, sh oh, shucks. Oh, now, you can't sell nutrition without nut, am I right? <laughs> uh, aye, aye, aye. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everybody, to the actual start of the stream. Hopefully, it stays working this time. Uh, For kids of all ages. So, I, I also lost audio, so I missed some things. Yep. Um, basically, we have two different recaps to cover. Just to, just to retread this ground real quick. Uh, one from the crew who was here last week, and one from Primrose, who was off doing her own thing. Uh, so we're going to start things off by figuring out where the Coterie meets up after the events of the previous night, where you had split up and done your, your uh, two separate things, so that you can all figure out where everyone has been and what you all know now. So... Uh, I I think I know the answer to this, but where yeah. are we meeting up? <laughs> At that most holy of Texas institutions, Whataburger. Ah, yes, of course. Good old Whataburger. Just like you like it. Just like you like it. It's still relatively early in the evening, so you're probably right after that that dinner rush time. It's a little bit of a uh, less busy time at Whataburger, but... Most Whataburgers are busy most of the time. And, you know, right about 2 a.m. is when all the uh, the drunks will be released from the bars and need their fix for a good greasy hamburger or taquito or whatever else they might have a hankering for after drinking the night away. So, everyone uh, coming together in the parking lot of this Whataburger... our vampires uh, gather once again. Before we dive into things, though, however, it is a brand new night, so let's see if any of you wake up hungry. Go ahead and have sir, a rouse, rouse check. check. Yes, sir, a rouse check from everybody. Yay. Ah. <sighs> Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm away for a moment. Is everybody? Felix is the only one who passed. Felix is the only yeah. one who passed. So everybody else goes up. Uh, what's everybody's hunger at right now with, with those failures? Does it, does it add it for you? Yes, it should. Okay, I'm at three. And that hunger one. Hunger one? Oh, because you... Uh, hunger, hunger, hunger two, technically. Fe Felix still just having a, a hold on his hunger. Very impressive. You fasting or something, bro? What's happening? Does it talk to me at all? Like, I'm really curious what my inner beat sounds like. Hmm. Stop. Uh, well... You would know that it sounds like glass. It sounds like your sire's voice. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. Uh, but he's been relatively quiet as of late. There's, it, there's always that 
that sensation deep inside, that, that eternal hunger that you can never quite fully get rid of, at least not for long. It's always sitting there beneath the surface. Uh... <laughs> yeah. At any point in time. Hey, you want some blood tacos, man? <laughs> Why does he say no. Why does he no, say Cheech. Cheech. <laughs> No cheech. I don't want no goddamn blood tacos. Racist. Blood tacos. Oh no. Um. Victor, you're at three. Okay. Okay, so uh, everybody gathering at Yield Waterburger. Uh, a couple of you are a little peckish. Victor, you were, you were starting to get quite noticeably hungry. You know that before long, the beast might have its way, and when that happens, things tend to get messy. Might be a good idea to try and take care of that at your earliest convenience. Or you could uh, see what happens. You never know. <laughs> could be fun. But, 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 but. You are not in the danger zone just yet. So, I assume you're all arriving in your, uh, well, that's a good point. How are all of you arriving at Ye Olde Waterburger? Where is it at? Is it, like, near me or near them? Ah, so the Waterburger in question, uh, is not far away from your new domain. In fact, you could argue it sits somewhat within your domain, that of... The uh, Palo Alto College campus and its surrounding neighborhoods. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> right? I was not told that I have a domain, right? You ah, got sent a true. cryptic message at some point or another. Yes, you did. Yeah. You remember uh, I, I did send Stop. that to you. Sup, girl? Meet up with Waterburger over there on Poteet Jordan. Ooh. <laughs> Knowing that you would be out of the loop of things, um, Felix basically just has like a group chat with everybody in it. Oh, so there is a group chat now. Oh, I would, I, t I would start the group chat. I just don't know who would partake in it, but everybody's numbers that I do have, which I believe is Priya's, excuse me, Primrose's, uh, Victor's, as well as Waffles. Yep. I have to I have to catch myself from doing that too since they're both P. P P R I. All right. Well, I text I text a, a running emoji. Uh, yeah, the text says um, "Ready to start the night." The best best buns on the house, and then I'll send the address to that one. <laughs> I'll text back to us. You did send it to everybody? Uh, everybody. He has included everybody in a group chat. Everybody into a group chat. So yes, you all do indeed receive that very text message. <sighs> oh wait, my first message never mind, I retract it. <laughs> New phone who dis. New phone who dis. <laughs> who dis? Victor will kind of respond and just say uh, I'm on the way. It might be a bit, and I'm actually going to be walking from my apartment to there. Ooh, that is quite the walk. I don't have I don't have any transportation. <laughs> I mean, unless I'll, you know, I'll, I'll I'll just say I'm on I'm I'm on the way. I I have to walk there, and leave it at that, and then begin walking. 
You could call, uh, call a taxi, I'll text you back an Uber. And be like, drop a pin, I'll pick you up. Uh, Victor sees the message and he looks up and, and sees that he's near like a street sign and just texts back like corner of 17th and Armada. I don't know if those were real street names in San Antonio. They, but... they might be. They might be. They they exist now. They exist in our yeah. form of uh, San Antonio. Okay. As I, as I like write that down, write that down. <laughs> what was that one more time? It's seven... text back corner of 17th and Armada. Uh, do I have a vehicle? That I have is... resource points. Uh, yes. If you have resources of at least one, then you, there is a possibility of you having a vehicle. It may not just, it may just not be the nicest of vehicles. Do you have mm. one dot or two dot? Oh, I don't have resources. Never mind. I have cash flow. Mm. One. I mean, I got him covered. Yeah, Felix yeah. could go. I also him. have the, the chauffeur. Mm. That I don't got you beat. But Victor's made like five blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and Armada. He's waiting in an alley. You see him uh well um I mean are you, you uh so do you have him covered for wheels? Otherwise I'm going to go get him. I'm waiting to check the garage to see if I have a bicycle or a car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so... I gotta look up that merit, exactly. Ugh. Jesus. Oh, there is no such thing as cash flow. It is, it is just refor resources. Oh, okay. So at <laughs> one point. At one point, yeah, you, you have a, uh, a, you know, a, a dingy little car or something, a truck to drive around in. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, it's you know, uh... a truck. Waffles just cross reference Seventeenth Street with a map of San Antonio on his phone and realizes, "Oh, you're, you're completely joking! Oh, you're right in the middle of the of the of the army base, Fort Sam Houston." <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh. I pull up in my whip. Okay, I'll walk out from an alley and kind of notice that you in the vehicle and then I'll walk up to the, up to the vehicle and get inside. Catch a ride. I open the I open the door. Mm. Catch a Appreciate ride. How good are you at driving? Look, man. May not be the prettiest girl to problem she put as soon as you ask her. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, <clears throat> there may or may Sorry. not be points in drive involved with this, but, uh, huh. we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll just say that you don't need points in drive to make a, a nice leisurely trip around town. Now, okay. if, if you start, uh, doing some high-speed maneuvers, then that might be a different story. But I take out, as he sits down, I, I open the glove box and I take out a liability form and I tell him to sign it. I'm not liable for you. I imagine, like, Victor gives you, like, the look of, like... <laughs> yeah, Victor just stares at you blankly and he's like, do you have a pen? Do I have a pen? Can I roll for it? <laughs> do, do you have a pen? W would you keep a pen with these... Uh, Next to liability form that is made <laughs> from, uh, in fact, pencil. Yes, probably. <laughs> yes, I it's just a very official it. looking document that you're looking at there, uh, Victor. 
definitely legally uh, binding. While he, wait, <laughs> while he waits on Primrose's response, he'll just kind of toss the, the clipboard, I guess, holding the forms, like, on the dash. And... Yeah. On the on the sign here, you'll see that, like, people have written their name before, and I've just erased it. So the imprint's still there? You just have to write it <laughs> It's, like, smudge. It's got that gray smudge yeah. where it's been, it can't quite erase it well enough. Or there's anymore. fucking white out on it. Oh, great. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Two at a burger. For the Please. sake of expediency, <laughs> you all <laughs> arrive one by one in the parking lot of Whataburger. Oh. Well, yeah, for, just for reminder's sake, it has been two nights since all of you uh, went and found Vinny in the van for your new employer landlord hmm. uh the miss parker and her right hand vampire uh M miranda and the previous night is when everything happened while the group was separated and now you are Coming back together to discuss your findings and to uh, see how to proceed now as a coterie with domain. So has anybody else done this sort of stuff before? No, man. I ain't. I don't even know you guys, really. I mean, I mean, we're Three days. Yeah. Like a three day relationship going, hey, you're now roommates is kind of an interesting thing to go through. What are you talking about? We we have this haven. We have this domain like assigned to us now. We got you got there's an area that we want to if you recognize the ownership by the by the the big lady um that we're assigned to. We gotta pay rent on it if we wanna keep it. Um, on, uh, I don't think I'm mistaken in assuming we are all new at this, or ish? I mean, I don't normally get told to do things for my sire. So, this is new. Yeah, for me, it, this will be a first time working with a group. I, I did some small work in San Antonio just to or small work in Vegas just to stay afloat for making my way here. Okay. Okay. Well basically what we got is an area where we can kinda do well we got an area we can hunt in without stepping on anyone's toes or asking permission. As long as as long as Big Liddy is in charge of this region and we stand uh, stay in her not negative light, we're probably good to go. Um, if this is going to be our kind of, like, if we're going to work as a group, we should probably establish somewhere in this region where we can meet up that's not the middle of seven fast food restaurants. Uh, because, yeah, I'm not comfortable meeting in public all this much, considering. I mean, at some point, we'll need, like, an actual meetup spot. Uh, in which case, like, the Haven that we're assigned to, I think, establishing oh. kind of like a business meeting room at some point. Well, we don't. We don't have a haven yet. We don't have. We haven't established anywhere in our little area that we can all kind of crack down on. That's probably something we need to look into sooner rather than later. Especially if anybody doesn't have a secure place to call their own. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I'm I'm set up where I'm at, but I wouldn't mind helping getting something set up here just to facilitate our further cooperation. Also, it's never hurts to have a fallback location. Yeah, true that. 
I mean, I don't know what's all around. Like, I know a little bit of what's around here, but honestly, we might. There's, I don't know, there's a whole lot of abandoned territory in this region. I mean, if we could. We got some finance. I got a little bit of finances I can put into it. If we can find somewhere we can take over for too bad, not too much spot, we can set it up. I mean, so is there like canonically like some places that we'll have to scout out to see if there's like a business opportunity there, Topher? Canonically? Uh, you have some sway to do a number of things here in your territory. That might be uh, something to do as well, is, is spend some time exploring your territory, finding out what all there is there. Yeah. You've only briefly s scanned over it, yeah. you know, the previous night. Um, so you know about the college, you know that there is some residential type areas uh, and a few fairly decent uh, shopping mall-esque places. Yeah. Is, yeah the, is the boxing club in this area, too? Or is that somewhere else? Waffles whips out his cellular and just goes to Google Maps and pulls up a map of this region. Yep. Be like, honestly, looking at it, no, there, I don't see no boxing clubs around here. Um, we got a bunch. There of... is one. Okay, okay, cool, cool. We got one there. Oh, we got a lot. We do have a lot of residentials and a lot of schools. Yep. That's the big thing. Where's the map at? Um, um more? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm like just looking at Google Maps. Uh, oh, like, <laughs> like actually, I'm actually looking at Google Maps right now because I kind of know our general area where we're allowed, which is um, like north of four Interstate four ten, Highway four ten, and I don't remember where the northern edge of our boundary lies, but I know it's like a, the, a small section above Interstate four ten or Highway four ten. It's up to Highway thirty five. I was 35? Yeah, or Interstate 35. Okay. I-35. Yeah, so yeah. we have... And, and basically that whole strip um, between... What is that? Uh, 16 and South Zara Mora Street. Okay, okay. Right, so there's... There's one place I would like to go and visit, um, which is like the college, uh, to see if there is room for a, uh, not necessarily like a teacher, maybe like somebody who does like nighttime like watches for the ag team. I don't know how feasible that is. Mm -hmm. It will certainly, uh, that is something that will take some time. But it is certainly possible. Um, in which case, uh, you, you pretty much mentioned like there's like rules and stuff like that for us to figure out as like a coterie, right? Yes. So one of the things that we are going to be doing this evening is uh, actually creating the coterie officially. And what that will entail is uh, basically determining, uh, first of all, you guys get... Uh, there's mechanical benefits to the territory that you have in terms of hunting. Uh, there is also uh, things to consider as far as like security that you may think of uh, later on down the line. You each provide one dot worth of advantages that you can purchase for the coterie as a whole. That you can pull together to do things like set up a haven. Now that 
in, in game, it's going to take a little bit of time for that to set up. We're just kind of doing the mechanical building of it, you know, putting it on paper. And then over time, those things will, will take effect. Um, but you each have advantages that you can spend for the coterie. With the cap, uh, you can spend it just like any other advantage, basically, and you can use experience to purchase additional dots for various things for the coterie. The caveat being is if you use experience to purchase something for the coterie, it exists for the coterie, and then if it gets lost, it is lost for the entire coterie. Mm, wow. So if you guys put points into Haven and build yourself a nice Haven and then it get firebombed, then obviously you all lose access to that Haven. And it's kind of basically like the resources of an entirely different entity, right? Mm -hmm. It is the resources that you have all pooled together. Okay. So we each have like one dot we can just assign to it just natively at the formation? Yep. Okay. So, and well, we can we can get to that. Uh first things first though, I think is probably best to talk about what happened last night. Mm -hmm. So, after our first like team team effort I went back home, and you'll never guess who was there. I'll look around. Are they going to guess? Miranda, your sire? <gasps> yep. My sire. She never shows up unless she wants something, and guess what? She wanted something. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, turns out, uh, she wanted me for another errand. And we basically, like, three-teamed with this person named Asher to go, like, save some hostages and stuff in a warehouse. Like, kind of near, like, the southwest part of the city. Uh, we we saved two of them. Which is not far from your current location. Yeah. Uh, one of them, crazy. His name is Stephanie Ruiz. You guys know her? No. She's the leader of the Thin Bloods in San Antonio. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so I have her contact information. If we ever need a leader of a group, but saved her. And then this guy named Wiz. You guys know Wiz? Look around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. No. Nope. Uh. He's an alchemist, which is crazy, blood alchemist. And they were taken by a bunch of thugs that are basically using them to make drugs. Called Crimson. All right, all right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's something that I heard about, too. From these same people? We actually discovered. You know, from some other folks. Kind of to waffles. We, well, it seems, little one, that we... Uh, I don't know, it, that we have stumbled upon some more paths. Uh, we were charged with hunting down... Uh, big Lady kind of asked us to go ahead and hunt down uh, this cartel we've been kind of digging into. And part of that, the dude with the tattoo and the little... All the... Yeah. And... Well, they're selling drugs called Crimson. Made of vampire blood, and your little bit of info right there kind of connects what's going on, because I fucked up some of them drug dealers and got some of their some of their stuff, and yeah, it's some kind of vampire blood narcotic. Um, I don't like that, and that helps us not having to like reveal necessarily. What do you know about the guys that were holding? Do you know anything about the guys that were holding them? Uh, they were the same kind of, the same from the same group of thugs that we encountered when on our excursion. Yeah, the ones that lifted the van. 
Yeah. Okay. So um, it kind of hmm. solidifies the fact that they weren't just a bunch of random people. Yeah. Oh no, they were. They're they're part of a group. This is most weird. So they're making it and pushing it. Oh yeah. And it affects vampires. This seems like uh, some sort of revenge stunt, along with uh, the... mm-hmm. it's vampire blood. Right. Uh, I was told hey, Hector Ruiz. You said Stephanie Ruiz. She any? Yes. Re- you know if she's any relation to Hector? No, they are not connected. Okay, okay. Uh, common name, but you gotta ask. Yeah. Um, I found out. That they're they're peddling this bud, but Hector kind of disappeared last night. He was supposed to meet up with some of his boys and never showed. Another rescue. I'm not saving Hector, like, but he knows. Uh, like, uh, if he's a part of the, well, actually, I wonder if you spooked him. The Putin Espins. Like, there's a connection between Hector and the Putin Esco. Right? Yeah, well, not... Yeah, I'm not worried about the bigger fish right at the moment. I'm thinking it's Hector Ruiz's cat. I wonder if her raid spooked him. I'm, I'm wondering if it happened at the same time before. I don't know. But... Hmm. The... I might be... I'm, I'm probably leading to assumptions, but he seemed to... Something seemed to have spooked the man. And it might have been our when we went and grabbed the van, considering that was a pretty. I'll be honest, that was a pretty surgical. It, we all, it wasn't obviously a gang hit. I mean, we weren't messy enough. Like quite literally, the only thing was one singular dead body, which is oh, all. Yeah. It, which was all it would take for somebody to go. Oh, and, I didn't hear back from my people. They're dead. Well, no, it's. The fact of the matter, we left. Every, there's only only two people didn't come back, weren't able to wake up and report that something happened. Uh, this it was it wasn't a gang hit, so he might be getting the inkling that someone's about to start putting pressure on him. But we don't know enough about this entire group yet to even say anything outside of they moved in fairly recently and they started stealing, they started selling drugs. And hmm. one thing that my sire told me before she went off to go get cigarettes and milk again <laughs> uh, is that she basically feels like war is coming, and drugs usually are used prior to weaken parts of society. Well, yeah, and and with on that, there was one other thing we had uh, discussed before we dug into the matter of the narcotics. When we went back to Casablanca, we met with Miranda, and there was someone else there named Bianca, and she essentially oh, told us yeah. that the new prince is is coming to San Antonio. We're, we're invited to the Elysium. All oh, that. Cool. That's. That's politics. Um, <laughs> uh, none of y'all really had con. So the one, the one that created y'all, most of y'all have at best a conflicted relationship with. Am I right? Did they introduce y'all to like the politics? At least at cursory level. No. No. All right. Um. I don't know a whole lot. I'm not. I can't speak to too much. But I know there's a couple big factions of our kind in the world. Uh, one claims they aren't a faction. And the other two consider them a faction because they aren't part of their faction. Uh, that's what uh, uh, old hat over in the in the north in the northwest side of town. Um, he runs that chunk of north south. The old baron out there. He's one of those factions. Um, he has a grip on that area. Um, we got. 
got a uh, big lady over at the Casablanca. Uh, she controls this section of town. This is her area. Uh, and then you got the area around the river walk in the north, kind of northeastern side of town, which is run by this group, uh, Camarilla. Um, they're one of the big factions, like the big global, like, shadow factions of the, of our kind. Um, don't know a lot about them, they're old-fashioned sticklers for rules. Um, I've, I've met some folks in that group, just in passing. Um... Their prince is probably already in place, and it's just they're probably wanting to make a power play for more control over more sections of the city. But I don't know. Um, uh, they like they're big for making yourself known. Like, uh, uh trying to think of how to word him. So, y'all were told by your sires or by random acquaintances to meet at Casablanca, correct? I was told by the lady who owns the land, quote-unquote, that I own. Okay, so you were contacted and said, hey, you need to go meet this person for years. All right, all right, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, my, my sire didn't have anything to do with it, and I haven't oh. heard from him in a while. That's, yeah. Um, basically going to this Elysium thing from what I know is you're stepping into their politics at least to a degree and I think it could come with pros and cons depending on who you are and what you feel like doing I don't know much more about it than that I was I was told I was kind of taught to Pay your niceties to pay your niceties to your clan, and then just make sure you know whose land you're on and follow the rules. Like if we're gonna work in that section of San Antonio, we probably need to make our make ourselves known or any of y'all known. But uh, well, I'm rambling a little bit. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is there's no new prince coming in. The prince of San, San or there could be. But there's currently a prince of San Antonio. I don't know their name, but they live up over by the river walk somewhere. And they control, they they have praxis, that's their word, praxis over San Antonio. But effectively, they only control that sliver of it because they got to deal with the Baron on his side. They got to deal with the big lady over Casablanca. And they got to deal with the fucking debauchery and madness that is the rest of this fucking town. Um, they can't, like, ah. Uh, I'm rambling. I uh, pretty much got the gist okay. of it. It's a lot of good information. Yeah. Um, just be polite and don't promise nobody nothing because they're going to hold you to If you, That's why I warned you when she offered you to give you a little help for a, for a favor. I was like, they'll, they'll call that favor and you, ain't, you might not like what they call you and ask you to do with it. Yeah, 100%. But it is an opportunity, though, to get something of a very oh. good value. Oh, that, possibly, yeah. Like, both sides of the coin. It's on the table. It's just... I just yeah. know they don't like some types. Um, and yeah, Tell me about it. And, <laughs> yeah. And some people are more welcome than others. I mean, same could be said of any group, but... Yeah, sure. Any one of us. Good point. Oh, everybody likes us. No, I'm just saying, like, any one of us could be at odds of, you know, some faction. Oh, yeah, definitely. This college, like, uh, Felix is, like, thumbing through his phone and going, man, this college looks like a fucking high school it's not exactly the uh, the biggest, most prestigious college, sure. Um, it is uh, fairly well known for its agricultural programs, especially. Would there be a way for us to convince uh, some people for access into either the... 
veterinary clinic for the gymnasium. With time and maybe a little bit of uh, vampire something something, you should be able to. Hear that? You gotta put out. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm pretty good at wrangling. I, I mean, that is, that is definitely one way. <laughs> it's not exactly what I'm saying. Uh, then again, um, your, your skills as a group doesn't quite include many of those sort of advantages. Nope. <laughs> but yes, with, uh, there, there are things that you could do. Again, that will take some time and a little bit of uh, a little bit of effort on your part. What about purchasing that piece of land that I sent you to? Yeah. So the question was whether or not uh, resources. How many dots in resources do you have? I have a whopping three. With three, you should absolutely be able to uh, purchase something like that. Now, it's probably going to bring your resources down for a time. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit... Of, it might take a whole week for me to close out on some property nearby that college, but I can essentially secure us a base. Does that yeah. include the... Uh, the extra dot and resources you got as a reward for mm. the rescue mission and retrieval mission. I got it from Sandman and a purchase pit from me at the beginning of character creation. You should also have an additional dot of resources from uh Miranda. From from Miranda, the cash reward that you were given as well as Everything else. Yeah, well. Okay. You got Jesus. you got a big wad of, of cash. Unless you used all that in the gambling. I made money from gambling. Oh, That's okay. true. You actually <laughs> yeah, you uh you somehow came away with a win, which by the way I'll I'll, I'll talk about that off stream, but uh Priya, I still have your deck of cards from the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so, fine, dude. so if you've so been missing cards. them i have them for some reason they ended up in my bag so nah it's all good cool <laughs> i have like three more and they're all tied up with hairbands nice i don't even know if they're all from the same deck if you have 52 cards then lucky you i'm not sure i think so i think it's a full deck i didn't really count but anyway yeah we used that to play an impromptu texas hold'em game uh last session Really, really lucky. Yeah, extremely lucky. <laughs> I I couldn't even uh, like yeah. say, oh, I I pulled some strings, and some storyteller strings behind the scenes. No, I it's how it actually uh got dealt out. <laughs> oh, well, you're welcome. Should lucky deck of cards. Thanks. Yeah. Um. A uh. A sleek, gray sedan pulls up besides where you are all parked and uh, stepping out of the vehicle is a, a much uh, better looking Vinny. All the bruises and cuts on his face seem to have pretty much healed by now. He uh, he gets out. Hey, got the whole team here. Mm-hmm. Gotta get get some shit done. Interesting place to hang out. And he uh, he walks over and digs into a a, a pocket and presses a, a fairly sizable wad of cash into Primrose's hand. Whoa! How much? Uh, it is enough to give you one additional dot of resources. 
which is to say quite a lot. If managed correctly, he could live off that for a fair amount of time. Well, you guys especially. Oh, yeah. But, hey, what's up? Uh, discussing next moves. This is about the uh, Hector situation? Yeah, to a mm -hmm. degree. Kind of got a grasp with the what they're doing on a bigger scale, but got to figure out enough to fulfill our end of the bargain. Sounds fun. Y'all, uh, y'all need any help? I, I, I feel like I kind of owe you guys. This isn't some like backwards recon. You're keeping an eye on us, is it? Well, Bonnie hasn't said that I can't help you guys, so I, I do have a little bit of my own free will. Okay. But, oh. uh, I mean, yeah, it, assume that anything said in my presence probably makes its way back to her. Gotcha, bub. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, we're... We're probably somewhat at an impasse into the Hector situation. I mean... We can keep swinging. We can keep squeezing random gang members and talking to people, but you got there has. To... Go ahead. There has to be like some detail with Danny, or at that chop shop that we were at, something that could at least lead us in the general. Well, we have information of like where they're possibly pushing, and I am waiting on some context to tell me where they're, where oh. it's flowing. Yeah. I know they had set up shop on the corner of Blank and Blank Street. I don't know. I I fucked up some dudes over on over where they were setting up and selling stuff not too long ago last night or yesterday. Nice. That's where I got what information I got. Um, I almost want to say we could hey, maybe take a two pronged approach to this. Maybe three. You guys seem to be researching into it more on the asking people side of things, and apparently with what Prem was doing last night, me and her kind of in the phase of fucking up their operations in a more obvious sort of way. Yeah, I, I like think we could we... maybe dual approach it. I mean, we could put some pressure on them. Yeah, and that's a good idea if we keep the roles separate. Maybe we yeah. can remain undetected for a little bit longer than we yeah. normally would. Because at least two of them know, like, at least three of them have, at least know that I'm, they don't know, they don't know a lot about me, but they know someone's, uh, someone, one of them knows for sure that something happened. Think it's going to be a problem? No, nah, if it was a problem, I'd have ended in there, but it's... I think it's a good idea that I, I think I could put some pressure on them a little bit if we could find out some more. I think if I keep maybe now it's a group act, not necessarily a group effort, but it's all I could keep on putting pressure on some of their street level dealers. Um, a it might give us some, might be able to crack some more information, and B it might force them to do something they don't want to. So I'm not above impersonating law enforcement to try and get them to maybe think in law enforcement and getting involved. Um, or just, a, I could just play a crazed junkie that's going after them. I mean, I can pull a fast lie every once in a while. I don't... I will need a lie. I'll just, just have my dog maul them and steal their shit. <laughs> now I like that idea. Personally, like yeah. Personally, I think I made my opinion zone last time. You know, put a bullet in the head and drop him in the river. But th uh, maybe that's the New York talking. 
Well, they aren't, they aren't exactly quality stand-up folks, considering they're just dealing drugs to these people, and I'm not above dealing with them in a brutal fashion that need be. Also, uh, well, be frank. I think putting pressure on them is going to do good. I think it'll for. I think they might like. Th th this seems like. Be honest, what I've encountered so far has been a pretty amateur fucking operation. Hmm. Like they grabbed your van, but that that was they knew your van was there. It's the, like they seem more like street level gang members, and not necessarily like we're not. It doesn't seem like we're going against an organized cartel or anything of that nature. I think them calling themselves a cartel is a strong word. For them to try and intimidate folks. Could be. And I'm still worried about the drugs they're dealing, they're peddling out, because that's, that's some see The fact that it is what it is makes me nervous. What are they pushing? Get... Heroin? Crack? Uh, nah, um... I ain't afraid to say it to the ladies since they're pushing their territory, and you feel free to, I know you'll, like you said, uh, they're pushing this stuff called Crimson. Um, I'll pull out a, I'll pull out my little bit that I've, that I had from my last, uh, my encounter, the part, the one I retrieved, um, and toss it over to him. Um, it hits our kind. Huh. And he kind of, like, unwraps it and goes, ah. Crimson, I get it, because of the color. These people are just... I, not creative. The, no, 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 no. You, the, uh, the grasp of my... Um, gently phrasing it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it affects uh, our kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hear you. And I, I've okay. seen similar things before. Uh, I have too. That's it's, it's where I got this. That's why I don't like it. Hmm. Them bloods are involved then. That's always fun. Yeah, I know a little bit about them, but not, uh, not about the group involved. I know about the whole the intermediary between you and us for all, or, or in a, intermediate step between you and us for in some means. Yeah, basically. Um, oof. the the Duskborn, some people call them. They're uh, some of them are a little closer to me. Some of them are a little closer to to you guys, and uh, some of them can do stuff like this and kind of holds up the, the candy. A little bit of uh, blood and mixed with some of their own, perhaps or. Uh, they they do all sorts of weird things. I I've seen uh, <laughs> I've seen drug dens less complicated than what some of these guys put together. Hell, I've seen chemical plants less complicated than what but some of these guys put together. That factors in at least at a at some level. Is directly related to us, not us, uh, the greater and greater us. Um, and at some level, this puts all of us in danger because they're selling this to normal everyday people, mm. which draws attention of, oh, well, frankly, like the police. If this stuff actually starts hitting in town and becomes a problem, the police are going to get involved, and then that that's going to get ugly. That yeah. could get ugly. Yeah, it certainly could. So, you got this guy. He's pushing this, this drug. Uh, what else do we know? He... Didn't show up for he didn't schedule show up for a scheduled meeting last night. I know he has a hideout south somewhere south of X, and 
tough. It's just I don't know the I don't know the location I was last night, so I know it's to the southern end of it. I don't know a little bit more. I can maybe narrow that down some. Um, oh, fuck! Oh, Y'all still got that phone? Yeah, I still have it. I haven't reached out to my guy yet with some supplies to get into it, but GPS you know. tracking. I wonder if that phone might give us a map to some of their areas. If 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 the dummy doesn't have his GPS turned off, I wonder if you could track the phone. Now you'll you'll find this out through your guys, but you use that phone, we might be able to see where at least where he made calls or stuff like that. I think. And we might be able to narrow that might be a one avenue that our not beating up drug dealers team goes down is maybe cracking that. I don't know though. I'm, I know you can kind of do that stuff, but that's because I've seen it on TV. Vinny, you know, do you yeah, have? Seen do you have? I'm just curious, Vinny, if you know anybody that could make that a tonight kind of solution. Uh, yeah, there might be some guys uh, back at Casablanca who might be able to take a look. I mean, I'll be honest, uh, that kind of stuff is a little after my time, so I'm not very familiar. Well, that's something that we can get done tonight. Might put us in the right direction, at least for next week. Yeah, I would do it myself, but I don't really have the equipment. How much? Yeah. I think that'd be a big way you could do us a solid is cracking that phone and getting us like maybe using it so we can backtrack where we might be able to backtrack at least to where they're storing their supply. And if we can find at least a storehouse or a middleman, we can track that further up the chain. Sure. Yeah. He kind of don't mind taking it or oh, handing it and Hold out his hand for it. Good. I actually left it back at uh, my place. It's powered off as well. Figured the GPS tracking might work both ways. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I, would, I, I would think so. I mean, like I said, yeah. so you put them in aluminum foil and then in a chip bag. That way, that way people can't. That way, government can't track them. <laughs> well, so for your idea of like splitting up. Into two different fronts. Yeah. Who who did you want to roll with for that? Oh. Half, your half of it. I think. You beating people up. Yeah. That seems like I'm. I'm more. I'm a little more clandestine than you are. I, I understand that by or by nature of you, you just punch things good. Um. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking we start like at least at the beginning we could start knocking off some drug dealers stuff like that and maybe ruffle some cages i think i think miss prim right here probably a good one to do that with um not denouting y'all's ability at all but y'all seem to have gotten some traction on the more sleuthy side of things yeah I mean, if you want to roll with me vector we can go back to your place and then meet up with Vinny at the casa blanca sure yeah don't Don't fuck up nobody that I want to say I gotta. If we're gonna work together, y'all don't like. You gotta behave yourselves a little bit though, for my sake. Don't be fucking up people. Don't need to be fucked up. Oh, I don't do that, right. and I don't kill unless it has to happen. Yeah. All right. Kind of echo that sentiment. I, I think I'll. I'm gonna... Uh, and I'll think about, like, the hunger a bit, and I'll say I'll try to be on my best behavior. <laughs> Look at the lot of you already acting like a proper coterie. A what now? A uh, coterie. It's what they call uh, uh, small groups of uh, uh, your kind uh, that they gather together and, um, you know, pursue uh, goals together. Uh, you think of it like a team. Uh, like the Parasitic Avengers, guys. <laughs> I saw that movie. It's good shit. Yeah, it was fun. 
do we need like a code to rename or anything like that? Or is that just like a verbal agreement kind of thing? I mean, if you want, you can gussy it up however you you want to. But uh, no, it, it's more of a uh, what's what's the phrase? Uh, Alliance, mutual acquaintanceship. Yeah. yeah. Now, different coteries do different things. Some some coteries are designated to uh, working and, and doing certain types of, of jobs. That's typically what they're good at. Now, that's not all they do, but, you know, it's it's all in how you sell it. Interesting. Okay. Really, a group of you people getting together, trying to accomplish shared goals and, uh, you know, uh, trying to survive the nights together and maintain whatever little bit of you <laughs> that's left in there before, you know. Housekeepers, yeah. I'm not necessarily used to working with my kind, but so far it's proved to be pretty pretty good. It has its benefits if you can come to an accord. I've been around a long time. I've been doing this for a long time. And, uh, you know, I like to think of it as uh, coteries are like bands. You know, sometimes you get together and you may not like each other. But together, you're able to accomplish a lot more and to do things in a more impactful way than you maybe could by yourself. So I guess what you guys have to figure out is uh, what kind of music you want to make. You know, what kind of... Uh, what kind of impact do you want to have on the city of San Antonio and on this... Slice that you own. And you gotta figure out what you're willing to do to make those things happen. Songs a scar. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we'll figure that out as we roll together a little bit. We don't we gotta know what everybody's strengths and weaknesses are to a degree. Like, Probably a good start. Um, and we'll figure that out over time. Like, we know girly, she can put up a fight. I don't want to fire her, and I'm bigger than she is. Um, <laughs> we know boy over there likes to shoot stuff. And I do. Um, we got uh, Jumpy McGee here, and myself, who are somewhat sneaky, somewhat punchy. Um, we haven't really decided too much on that yet. Um, I'm not going to claim I have prior law enforcement experience, but I might. Maybe that's a maybe that's a good place to start. What uh, what are you guys? What's your uh, your family? Your 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 clan? Oh, some used to say I was the most handsome of the Toreadors you'd ever meet, but that'd be a lie. <laughs> I didn't want to assume. Oh, no. It's written on my face, brother. So, I am... Oh, this is like this is like one of them coming out parties. I am a Nosferatu. <laughs> I am a Nosferatu by design, being that I'm ugly. Yeah, maybe, but you're you're uh, sneaky, and and you can be really <laughs> strong. You can be, uh, and you got to. Oh, I see you got away with uh, animals with your little canine companion over there. Yeah, yeah. That's my thing. Hmm. You should. Uh, 
always assume that one of you are around. Yeah. It's more than likely, they are. You just can't see them. Yeah. And I don't know that much. And you, and he points over to, to Primrose. Yeah, a pretty good feeling I know what you are. What would you like to share with the class? No, I want to know if you're right or not. Hmm. You got Bruja written all over you. All right, share your stereotyping. <laughs> you're strong, fast, and some of you can actually, uh, you know, put a little bit of the razzle dazzle on and uh, charm a crowd. Razzle dazzle. Yes. You strike me more as the strong, fast type, though. Yeah. But I put up a good front. Hmm. And that leaves you two. And he points over at, uh, at Victor and Felix. And he, like, looks for a long moment. Honestly, I have no fucking idea. I mean... You, and he points at Felix, you, I saw you appear out of nowhere, so you got some of the same things that he's capable of, and he points over to to Waffles. Yeah, you know, and uh, being a little stealthy is part of my thing. But you know Nas, that's for sure. Just a little bit prettier. Hmm. So... Care to enlighten me? Well, not really well received around these parts, but uh, I guess telling you will eventually, you know, it 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 would eventually have been out of the bag at some point or another. Yeah, Miranda already knows. This is just personal curiosity. Well, uh, I'm, I am one of the Banu Kaki. You? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. You do any of the weird, uh, you know, magic-y type stuff? Mm -mm. No, I wasn't taught any of that stuff. Damn. Well, you're sneaky and you're fast. Yeah, that's about the gist of it. All right. Victor. Yeah, I'm with the Ravnos clan. Ah, one of the drifters. Hmm. Don't know much about your clan. They pop up from time to time. So I honestly don't know much about what you're capable of. Sometimes I don't know myself. Keep people guessing. I like it. Well, my diagnosis oh. is that Pretty sneaky little group you've got going on here. You could be good for uh, spying. Be good for, uh, well, you're literally an assassin. He points over at Felix. He kind of like throws his eyebrows at him. <laughs> Makes sense. S suppressor. Yeah, he had a sound and suppressor on. He's good at moving quiet. Um, pretty good shot. Yeah, I saw the way he uh, dealt with that guy. By, by kid or by trade, you're, you're someone who knows how to kill people. Yeah, had a little bit of practice. Yeah. 
Well, what does that leave us all with then? You know, knowing all of our clients and stuff like that. Oh, like I said, I'm just personal curiosity on my part. But it's good to know that who you all are and what you're capable of. Maybe it can help you uh, figure out a direction, you know, right. with this whole new coterie yeah. thing. Knowing what we can do allows us to craft and decide what we what we best. Well, he has a point, and he's kind of he's being gentle with poking us at it, but because we're all being super secretive, I'll be honest here. Like, none of us wants to share too much about the other, which is smart. Secrets have power, um, but knowing what everybody can do, it would be helpful for us knowing what we can do in the future to fulfill our objectives. Um, you know the lady can fight and she's smart. Don't know much else on that stage at this moment. But there, um you're sneaky and could shoot. Um I'm I I'm not exactly sneaky at all. I'm I can do a little I I'm pretty wide I'm pretty varied in what I can do. Um I <sighs> What did everybody here have a job at some stage before they moved into this lifestyle? I was a ranch hand. Okay. All right. And I was. I was... What? I feel like pro wrestler. Okay. You tell me my moves. That tracks. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, Bruja Pro Wrestler. I don't know a lot about what they can do, but I I know they can do the whole social crap, and they're also physical specimens. So yeah, that make that that chat that that that, that calculates. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I was a sheriff deputy. Ah, that's why I get uh, cop vibes from you. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, a canine unit. Ah. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I can handle myself in a fight. I know how to shoot a gun. I'm pretty good at. I'm pretty good at investigating stuff. I was working up towards being a detect. I was working up towards more of a detective position with the local police when everything happened to me. So, I mean, I'm. I can find stuff out. Like I'm not bad at that. Um. My sneakiness is almost entirely related to what I am, not what my skills are. <laughs> but, yeah, and, like right now we're using this Hector Ruiz thing to figure out what, figure ourselves out as a group. It's a hell of a test drive. Do. Oh, yeah. Um,. Anyway, I just wanted to, you yeah. know, get the <laughs> get the brain juices flowing a little bit. I'm gonna get this phone back to Casablanca and see what we can find out for you guys. Hopefully, I'll have an answer for you before the end of the night. Uh, yeah, I need to run by my place and grab it. And I believe uh, Felix was going to give me a ride. Yeah, you're rolling with me, man. And you, you got your own ride, don't you, Vinny? Sure do. Sure, I've done it. Uh, we'll meet you there at Costa Vinny. <laughs> All right. So, splitting ways, at least for the time being. Uh, as you all are making your way to uh, Costa Blanca, we'll take the moment to go ahead and take a quick um, look at the coterie sheet. Yeah. Uh, I put it in the center of the group there in the VTT. Can any can everybody click on it? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I can double click it too. Oh, that's cool. We could see each other's stats. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Duck coterie. Duck coterie. Yeah, and so... A uh, name to be determined if we want to change the name into something else. 
but yeah, just a, a nice little character sheet for us to put together. And yes, of course, you can all see your current stats, your health, your willpower, and your hunger level. So uh, I don't see it. You don't. Where is it? You don't see it. It's right in the center. Right. The VTT. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. I don't see everybody's hunger or the like, current statistics, but I do see like everybody's willpower and health, like the what they are, their peak potential. Oh, okay. Uh, so maybe the only I'm hunger the I see is my own. Okay. Yeah, I see my own oh, hunger, but okay. no one else's. I see everybody um, else's hunger. But I see everybody's potential. Like I can see that Felix and Permarose are both of a higher health potential than myself. Yep. Or Victor. But I'm the highest willpower in the group. Correct. Cool. All right. Uh, let me pull up the book. Uh, I'm going to be, we're mostly going to be using the VTM V5 Player's Guide, which is on my drive, if you guys want to look at it as well. I won't, I won't use one in your drive, but I'll use the one I ripped off your drive and saved on my phone. That works. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, just like your character, you guys get dots of merits to add. Uh, so you guys can collectively bring some dots together to do things. Uh, you can buy the normal advantages that you're able to buy for yourself as far as, like, Haven and, and things like that go. Um... And there's also specific coterie it, uh, merits that you can take as well. You can also incur flaws on the coterie. So just be aware of that. So you've got three stats as well for the coterie. You've got chasse or chasse, uh, lin or lean, or, and quartz alone. So chasse is the kind of how big your domain is you're we're lucky to get a fairly sizable slice of the city uh, so you're going to be starting off with three dots there uh, lean is a measure of how good the hunting is in your territory which also affects the hunting difficulty, which is what you roll against. That's how many successes that you need in order to be able to successfully hunt within your own territory. It also does things like affect the amount of resonance found uh, in your territory. And Portalon is the measure of how secure your territory is. This is the one that starts off at the lowest because you have a fairly wide range and a good portion of it is a big college campus that's fairly open. These things can be improved over time. Uh, but as anything, any sweeping change that's going to affect a large area, it of course is going to take a good amount of time. Now, because you do have a college campus on your domain, you're actually going to start with a three dot advantage called campus. And what campus does is a university, major library, or research facility that focuses on academic pursuits. Using its facility after hours, it provides the equivalent of two dots and the Haven Merit Library. Although access is limited at night and requires break-ins or a mask that provides justification and clearance. Uh, hunter groups with a religious or academic background get an extra die to their pools to infiltrate your domain. Uh, it also comes with its own uh, predisposition to 
um, Blood Resonance, which is Choleric and Melancholy. And as a reminder, the resonance of blood is, so you can sort of think of it like the flavor of the blood. It is uh, generally um, based on different emotions. And it will sometimes, if you find acute resonance within a vessel that you're drinking from, uh, it can actually give you bonuses to disciplines related to that resonance. So choleric and melancholy. Back over to my cheat sheet here. Is it like in Blood Hunt? Yeah, yeah, it's actually very similar to Blood Hunt, except oh, okay. in, in Blood Hunt they narrow it down to like your different abilities like e each type is related like choleric is your um melee damage and then the others give you cooldown reductions so you kind of think of it in that same vein but choleric is related to the disciplines of celerity and potence of which your group has a fair amount and melancholy has the disciplines of fortitude and obfuscate Fortitude you don't really have, but Obfuscate, several of you have. So it turns out, the campus is a, a pretty good place for your coterie in particular. What was the first one? Uh, the first blood resonance? Choleric. And the effect of that one more time? Uh, it is assigned to the disciplines of celerity and potence. Um, the, Damn, I mean, good. The humor of choleric is uh, it's associated with emotions like anger, uh, violence, um, passion, not necessarily romantic passion, that's more sanguine, uh, but just like being, you know, get your hackles up, you know, be passionate about something and be excited about something. It's associated with the element of fire. Whereas melancholy is tied to the element of earth. And it embodies emotions like sadness, uh, being scared, uh, being thoughtful, depressed. And those are, of course, tied to fortitude and obfuscate. It's not to say that other resonance can't be found in your territory, but just based on the nature of what the college campus is and the area surrounding it, that is what your vessels are likely to be predisposed to. Okay. So, with those sort of things kind of giving you a baseline, um, you have those four dots to spend. Uh, you es essentially have a two-dot haven library, although you do not have the haven, so that is something that you may want to spend points in if you want a central location where you can group up together. A mask may also be useful here, which a mask is a an alias that you use when interacting with mortals. And it could be something like you take up a teaching position or maybe not teaching, uh, although you, I suppose you could teach night classes if you wanted to. But something that would allow you access there in the evenings. Like a janitor. Like a janitor. Uh, maybe you could be part of the the board of directors for the school. 
see. or something along those lines. And like a, uh, what about just property outside that campus? That's something you could do as well if you wanted to get something off campus. It's just that in order to take advantage of the the library merit, then you'd want something on campus, on campus. itself. Yeah. Uh... If we are, if if like our my character already has a mask, but I have two points in it. Is that like one of those points is is one thing, and the other point is another? Uh, so the so the mask merit. Let me just pull that up. All right. Uh. So two dots in mask, I believe means that you could potentially pass a um a background check. Also keep in mind that if you spend points on a mask for the coterie, it includes all of you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if someone spends one point on mask, everybody has like an identity that'll allow them to pass basic scrutiny in this region. Yep, we'd have to figure out how, but you are somehow known to the university and accepted. Uh, well, the yeah, the college campus. You have a, a badge that you're able to gain access to the building with. And if people were to stop you, you could show them the badge and people were like, oh, okay, you're you're allowed to be here. Whereas a two dot mask is probably like you're well known around the campus, so when people see you come in, they're like, Oh yeah, they're supposed to be here. And you're saying each of our points can be spent in the three stats at the top or in mask, or is there uh, those three at the top, uh, that's something that would have to be invested in long term. So you would not spend dots yeah, makes... there. Those are basically like our stats mm -hmm. right now. Okay. So could I use, and so if we have like the four resources, could we have like a daytime security team for that haven? As well as like a mask to basically be like, hey, we're like the security team, to basically like make sure that the campus is safe so we have people at night during the day certainly and um so like how many dots would it take to have like the security in the daytime and the nighttime or which merit and how much hits would that take uh let's see i believe that is the watchman merit so one dot gives you uh, and this is included into haven so you'd have to spend at least a dot in haven Okay. Uh, and then Watchmen, each dot supplies four average mortals and one gifted mortal to watch over the Haven. Okay. So the more, uh, more dots you put of that, and obviously the, the larger your security team. Okay. Uh, and can I utilize some of my, res my own resources to get those Watchmen? So the one pit for the Haven, the one pit for the Watchmen... And then I would need help from one of you other guys to supply a mask for the security detail to run that haven. You can remember that you can spend experience to add to this. Now, of course, you could, you could, you already have a dot in Watchmen. You could, oh, so, pool so them I could just use. To to your haven, but then of course you're leaving your personal haven unguarded. No, they they stay at the ranch. <laughs> yep. 
back at the rank. Um, how much XP would it be for? Uh... It is three experience per dot of advantage. So you get one for free that you're adding to the group, okay. but you can all expend experience to add on to this at any time. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to supply the mask for the Haven? Yeah, I sure. don't mind. I can do it. I have an idea. Maybe like an inn at the school. I mean, our play would be the security detail for the campus college, keeping it safe. Unless you have like a different idea of how you want to share that. Thought about the janitor. <laughs> Well, each one of us could, in theory, have a different, like, the mat, the one-point mask for the group. Each mm -hmm. of us could have a different idea. Like, you could be night security. Uh, one of us, I th if I understand this correctly, Chris, one of us could be the, a janitor in the college that has an idea that says they're a janitor. Uh, yeah. Like, it's not all of us are, like, security or anything, like... Like Priya could run like the nighttime. Excuse me, Priya Primrose could run like the nighttime boxy club. Yep. Yep. So any yeah, advantage you put into the coterie affects the coterie in total. You all okay. benefit from it. Which leaves two pips for wherever we want to put that. Yeah. Uh, so the advantages are on page 167, I think? Wait, which page is that on? That sounds about right. Uh, I'm in the 170s right now. Uh, one... So the player's guide, um, the specific coterie advantages are on... 171. 170 onwards so we have bolt holes on tap privilege transportation for the coterie advantages mm -hmm. and then the normal advantages like if you just look in the uh either the player's guide for just regular merits and advantages or in the core book then those can apply as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, to read those out, um, there's bolt holes. Uh, when controlling so much territory, it can be a logistical challenge at times. The advantage is far away the drawbacks. Every dot and bolt hole merit to a maximum of three gifts coterie a bonus die. When trying to skip detection rate, they pursue and win within their domain. Plays into other dice pools at the storyteller's discretion. On tap, we have advantage. You add dice equal to the rating of this merit to find a victim of the specified resonance. I feel um, like... Sorry, and I didn't read the third one, but I feel like since we all prefer or the resonance works with everyone, I feel like maybe putting a point or two in this one was probably worth it so we can feed without worrying about... Mm-hmm. Hunger. Bonus, yeah. Point on tap. Uh, let's see here. Everything else is three or two points in it. Transportation, two pips. Small fleet of luxury vehicles and drivers. Driving six are at your group's disposal on short notice. Yep. Once per story, the coterie can call upon a rare or expensive vehicle, such as a helicopter bulletproof SUV for the night. Uh, death the driver or destruction of too many cars makes this very unavailable for short periods determined by the storyteller. So, you no, know, we could throw more point. Like, we got one point left, which is, I think, kind of roughed out, which would be me. Yes. Um, so we we could throw it in bolt holes. We could throw more points in the haven and make the haven a little better. Uh, um, uh, 196. What else could you add? Well, one dot in Haven would give us like somewhere fairly safe where we could meet up, rest, a base operations in this region. 
then we could put sub dots in the haven for things like security, amenities, things like that. Yep. Well, so I already have. Well, I would save on XP for the henchman and the haven because I'm, I'm trying to put watchman there. So if you want to put a point into Haven, and then I put a point into Watchmen, that gets our Haven situation sorted. I'm willing to I'm willing to throw the point in just to establish the Haven. Okay. Uh, so Waffles will establish the Haven. Um, I'm researching more. I'm kind of liking the bolt holes idea to to a degree, but that might be something for a little later. Yeah, and yeah. We can determine the exact nature of this haven at a later time. We don't have to spend too much time yeah. doing that right this second. Uh, but uh, this is on campus, correct? I don't want it on campus. Off campus, then. Yeah, I yeah, I like Waffle <laughs> personally does not want it on on campus. That's just asking for trouble. I think near campus is fine, but on campus, it's like. Like, the smart thing is to have it somewhere where we control the in and out of it, not necessarily where a college is where someone with a random key can accidentally just barge in one day. Well, our our haven, excuse me, our haven needs to be in the campus to take advantage of that library. That is true. All right, well, we can set, a, we can set it up there. I, I have my own personal one. So if we want to set it up on, in the college... As a, and, as a group, I'm not necessarily against it. And I can have like Watchmen too. Whenever they set up like security detail and we pan out the details in it, there'll be a room specifically for the people who are allowed in it. I.e., so us. so one thing to to notate about Havens is that it is you can have up to five dots in a merit. The way Haven works is you have. The base haven, which I think goes up from like one to three, which kind of just general denotes the size and you know the the opulence of the haven itself, or general security of the haven too. And then you have those bonuses that can add like watchman security. In this case, you get a library, which is two dots. It's all collective. So currently we have one dot of Haven for something on campus. We're planning on adding at least one dot in Watchmen for two. And then you're going to have the library for two additional that's going to bring you to four. So you have one more dot in Haven that you can add. Otherwise, you're going to have to start adding flaws to bring that number down so you can add more things. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can only ever go up to five and then at max. Yes. And, yeah. So us putting it in the, in the school, and also something to note for the group is I don't think it's against the rules that we have multiple havens in our domain. No, certainly not. So that might be the thing right here, is we throw a dot in the, we, like, and regards to that having Watchmen at some point, we throw a dot in Haven in Palo Alto, and we have an area adjacent to the library that we have access to that's fairly secure and safe. Like, worst case to worst, you could go, if someone needs to crash there for a night, they could crash there for a night and probably be safe, at least safer than just sleeping in a random abandoned house. Yeah. Like, because Haven applies security. It's harder for people to find you. Like, from my understanding of reading of it, like, one dot in Haven means that you're not just going to be found at random. Like they're gonna, someone with someone's going to have to put effort into hunting you down or getting to you there. Yep. So if we have like one dot in Haven, Palo Alto, that means basically we've secured the resource of that library and a safe place in the in the school for us to meet up or have anything there. But also, like you might think about, like you said, you have your me and you both I think have dots in Haven that are individual. We could also set up by another dot of Haven, which I'm thinking about doing. I'm, I'm thinking about XP expenditure. That's somewhere else. That's not adjacent to the school. That's going to be like the bomb shelter. Um, I'm thinking of this like a Nosferatu. It's like having a dot in Haven, Palo Alto is excellent, but also having or a spy having multiple places, multiple safe houses scattered throughout our domain. Because we do have a pretty big domain. If you look at it on the map. 
we have a pretty for four people we have a pretty big chunk of territory we got i think you were saying it was from the 16 north so if you're looking at a map of san antonio i think from my understanding of it we had we control everything from basically waterburger towards zaris zaris Samora street and then north between 35 and 410 yep so we have a pretty big area with a lot of stuff in it and I think us having multiple bolt holes in this re multiple havens in this region at some stage might be good. That makes sense to me. Because the one dot in mass covers us, all of us, for this for our domain. So, I guess really on tap and a mask is all we would need, right? For that haven? The on tap or herd? Or herd. Uh, or herd. Or Herd uh, would give us advantage. It basically means that we have we it would help us a little bit with feeding mm -hmm. um, versus on tap, which just means it's easier for us to sniff out the things. I'll admit I have I I don't have necessarily the same problem y'all do necessarily with sniffing out of blood or certain resonance. Yep. Um, that so being said, a herd might help. So basically, bare minimum for to get the Palo Alto University up and running. So Dot and Haven. On the college. Okay. Yep. Which I'm happy to say that that's where mine goes. That unlocks the library and gives us at least our first safe space in this region. Yep. Here. And then a herd. Which I believe, does herd give us advantage to hunting rolls? Uh, or you... not advantage, but a, an advantage to hunting? A group of vessels that the character may feed from without concern, though they are less loyal than retainers. They can slake hunger worth the dot value of the herd each week freely, and no roll is required. So you don't have to roll to hunt them. You just, you have dedicated people to go feed from, and that will relieve you of at okay. least one hunger if you have one dot in it. Okay, so herd, yeah. but that's only one between the group. Yes. So that'd be like an emergency. We have an emergency sippy cup person mm -hmm. floating around to college just in case. Yep. Uh, the, the, in that case, then herd might not be the the the, the blood residence one might be a little bit better pick. Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking of something that'll help us feed in this region. Yeah, once anything. a week isn't very good <laughs> for yeah. four people. It it's yeah. mainly made for when things kind of slow down. Right now we're taking it night by night, but it's not always going to be that way. So ha having something that you can kind of do on a larger time scale can be useful, but uh, and then do we care about getting the mask one as well? I think mask is important if we're going to want to go into Palo Alto College. It's if our to... haven is on the college, we want a reason to be there so we don't raise suspicion yeah. for a whole bunch of people being there. M myself, especially as a nos. It's going to be useful if there's some reason why I'm there. Otherwise, you're going to have to sneak in every time you want to use that haven and take advantage of the library. Yeah. Honestly, not that much of a problem, but better safe than sorry. Okay. And again, we can determine the exact nature of that mask at a later time. Yeah. Just want to get so the, the footprint down. So that's three pips into Palo Alto University. Can we can we get like a? Uh... I oh, it's the mask is for the whole domain. It's not just Palo Alto. Oh, it's for the whole domain. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is correct. Us putting a dot of Haven at Palo Alto, it that gives us access to research. But our mask basically means that any anywhere in our area, anywhere in our neighborhood, we're at least known. Yep. So, like, we could go up north. Like we have. Baptist University of the Americas in our domain up north or anything like that. That basically means that there's people in this area who know us. We aren't going to look at a place in this region if someone runs our base identity. That means the fourth tip that we get to place somewhere. Mm -hmm. Haven Pass. What page is the on the PDF for vampire merits? 
Uh, oh, I see. I see it. I got it. You found it. Okay. I think it does. And the the player just player's guide. Yes, the player's guide should have just about everything. If not it, then the core book. Uh, I, you can also there's the VTM wiki, which I'll go ahead and paste that as well, which gives you a shorthand. It doesn't tell you exactly word by word what it says in the book, like all the mechanical ins and outs of it, but it gives you a good idea of. What is available? Nerds and flaws. Mm -hmm. Influence could be good to go along with that mask. Yeah, influence like. Or, or fame, if you want to go more that route. Mm. And that link, are, these are the uh, Capri merits? Uh, the ones from that link, I think, should be... I'm trying to look and see if it's got... I think it's personal ones okay yeah it, this this one doesn't have a section for the coterie merits oh while you guys are looking at through that give me just a minute i'll be right back I don't suppose the points roll over. Like should have three. one more. Well, like if we if we only spend three, they don't roll over to next time. It's always just like one person each. No, the the points you spend you you keep until something happens to cause you to lose them. You're saying we could spend it later, GZ? That's what I was asking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to spend it all right now. Yeah, it's like whoever's holding on to their spare one can hold on to it and assign it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A retainer. Influence. Would, would be my pick for that last one. Those those two would be my pick. Yeah. I think it's up to to Victor. Spent my point in the mask. So we all good then, right? Oh. 
We have one dot in Haven, we have one dot in Mask, and... I want mine to go onto the tap. On tap, so three for on tap. So, okay. Who who put the dot in Haven? Me. Okay. Waffles, Waffles, uh, Waffles secured the library. Okay, and Victor put his dot in Mask. Uh, Felix, what did you spend your dot in? Um, it was going to be Watchmen. Okay. But, uh, the difference between Watchmen and Retainer. Retainer should be, um, something supernatural. Whereas Watchmen is a group of mortals. Um, he is probably a retainer. He's also a ghoul, but he's probably a retainer. Maybe a retainer as well. Yes. I mean, he's also not... He doesn't belong to any of you, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was using him as an example for Miranda or for the boss. Yes. Vinny might be a retainer versus Watchmen might be just the guy who's sitting in the security desk at the at the garage. A retainer is someone you know their name that has some importance. A Watchmen is just that's just the guy in the cart. The guy the guy that watches the checkout line. Well, the difference is, is that the retainer is the oil. The watchmen are essentially, essentially like paid hands, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is true. Retainer does typically mean it is a closer relationship. It does not, I was looking at it, it does not necessarily mean that they are supernatural in origin, although if you can get a ghoul, obviously that is going to be more reliable for reasons. That's probably going to be the exact thing is going to be in the core book. Ghouls can, like, do stuff in the daytime, right? They can, yes. I'd rather have one reliable named person than five unnamed people, humans. That's my vote, if you're going to go with that. Yep. A one dot would get you an underwhelming retainer. A child, a criminal lowlife, a horror nerd follows you around and does your bidding without a blood bond. Build them as a weak mortal. Two Librarian. dots. Yeah. <laughs> Two dots would give you a ghoul, a family servant, a human lover, or a dominated thrall. Give them a backstory, build them as an average mortal or as a ghoul with no advantages. And three dots will give you a retainer competent enough to act independently and make lesser problems go away. They are likely a ghoul with traits equivalent to gifted mortals on top of their supernatural abilities. So we're capped on it, right? Because we have the Haven, the Library, the Mask, the uh, Two Tab. And so we only have one more pit that we could use, so we'd be stuck with a lesser mortal. You have one for free, and then you can start spending experience for more if you want to. Yes, but doesn't it cap out at five? Haven caps out at five. Retainer is a completely different merit. Ooh. Okay. It cap it, and it caps out at three. It's like if we had Cyril and we actually used him in combat, and he actually leveled up. He'd be important. Wow. He did kill somebody, didn't he? <laughs> Level one. I'll I'll <laughs> spend three XP as well as a pip to get a two dot retainer. A two dot retainer. Uh by the way, um real quick before we get into retainer, just because I have the with thing pulled up. Um Priya, for on tap, which uh resonance did you want to be on tap? Uh, the fire one was, Cleric. I think, the one that my character would want, and also everyone else, right? Uh, Cleric one? is associated with potence and celerity. Yes, and I think most of us have 
either potency or celerity potence, right? Uh, I, have, I have celerity. Okay. The only odd man at no no Victor has potence, so all of you have some form of potence and or celerity. Yeah, and I think that would also be like thematically. I want that. Yep. Uh, fire. On my sheet, I think it's blank. For what? For blood resonance. Correct, because you're not you're not currently point? under the effect of a blood resonance. That's what that I means. see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how much XP to get it to three dots? Uh, so you get one dot for free, and then you can spend three experience for another dot. And then the third dot? Three experience. So it'd be six to get a three pip? Mm hmm can throw out three. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. You get a three pip retainer for a pip and six XP total. Okay. Uh, we will need to discuss the the nature of this retainer at some point. It doesn't have to be tonight. Um. As well as who because it's going to be a ghoul so whose ghoul specifically are they because you the you can't <laughs> they'll follow the orders of the coterie because you're you're putting them under the uh the coterie but just by nature of the blood bond they're going to be bonded to one of you in particular or felix is good at giving orders you can you can pass them around every every month. <laughs> I guess technically you could you could do that. Oh wow, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I'll start off. With, uh, I'll start it off. If that's alright with you, Victor. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind. Alrighty. Okay, so we'll discuss how all that comes to be. Because basically, after you deal with the Hector Ruiz situa situation, this is going to be stuff that kind of happens in the interim between after you deal with Hector and whenever the next thing pops up. But cool. Okay. Congratulations. You're now an official coterie. Almost. There is one last thing we have to talk about, which is your coterie... Uh, your chronicle tenants. Let me find it here in the book.
Sorry, having trouble tracking this one down. 172. Are they going to be similar to, like, touchstones? Oh, no, I... never mind. Just scratch, scratch all that. We're, we're good. Um... I misread that rule at some point. So, no, it is, uh, it is not the same. We do not create any such thing for the coterie. Although it may be a good idea to talk amongst yourselves how you would like to handle things. Mm -hmm. you, you... I know a few of us have mentioned like not wanting to fight unless we need to. Yes. I think that kind of like falls in line. Like, don't, don't be murder hobos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think, for me, if you have a problem or encounter that maybe only affects you, like, try to deal with it on your own, but don't be afraid to ask for help kind of deal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Clean up like your own you, mess if, if you can. Bring yeah. it to the group if you can't. Yeah, I would appreciate that type of relationship because I don't want to be dragged into a one-on-one -on -one with someone else. Unless it is unfair. And sometimes things are unfair and we just we don't know it until you're supposed to do one-on-one -on -one with someone and they bring a whole gang to fight you. Like, that's not cool. So basically, honor your fight. But if it's not honored... I will help you. If you need it. That's pretty much it for me. Sounds fair. No, the only thing that I really got is um Does, is this in line with my own chronicles? Yeah, your own convictions. You're, you're basically coming together to uh, create a shared philosophy based on the personal convictions that you all hold. Yeah, uh, really, one thing I would want this code read to uphold it would be just to respect animals. Be nice to the animals. Yep. I put my hand over in my heart. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> not going to be cruel to them. I like animals. They are tools, though. But that doesn't mean you mistreat them. Yeah. Or not care about them. Okay. Yeah, don't be, don't be, yeah, don't be mean to animals, don't, like, don't be a murder hobo. Fight your own fight. Hand, handle your own shit. But don't be afraid to ask for help if you think it's unfair. It's like a little asterisk at the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I put that down. Just clean up your mess if you can, bring it to the group if you can't. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't shit where you sleep. And protect Whataburger. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy ketchup. Oh, man. 
Jeezy, you you unknowingly have stumbled upon my my idea for the grand finale is this, a, a, a giant siege of Waterburger, and you must protect what? it at all costs. Everyone, <laughs> protect the Waterburger. <laughs> Um, uh, in and out, in and out, in and out. Attempts to open another one, but it's actually a contrary <laughs> position. Oh, so like any other burger joint that tries to open up, if it's in contest with Water Burger, it needs to go. <laughs> just, Start sabotaging just, other burger joints. <laughs> White Castle, yeah, we know what you're fucking doing. <laughs> what if that's the push? It's all Water Burger. It's like, what condiments do you want, sir? It's just crimson. It's one of those. It's a secret menu. No wonder spicy ketchup was, was so fucking good. Uh, crack, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't laced with crack cocaine. <laughs> oh, no. In character, it's like, yeah, we aren't evil. Don't be evil. Mm. Like, Our monsters, Waffle, Waffles has a code of, a code of honor, at very least. Yeah. Which, you, you brought up don't be murder hobos. Can we make that a little bit more yeah we can flex that a little bit more it's there's right and wrong i kill people for a living yes if they're doing wrong hopefully because yeah there's right and wrong there's good and bad we don't fuck with innocent people like you don't do you don't do lasting damage to innocent people you don't you aren't going around. It's like basically obey the law, for or not not obey the law, but that's a hard one to do. But it's use maybe use good judgment. I feel like we're all good, yeah, good candidates for having good judgment on things. Perhaps we can put this down as um, punish only the wicked, or punish only the. The guilty might Only be a better guilty. way for that. Yep. Now that's flavoring it a lot much more towards a Waffles as I'm Batman mystique of the situation, but um Yeah. Yeah, it's like like if someone's if someone's doing wrong, I don't care what happens to them. As long as it doesn't get as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. Yep. And I think as a group that like I think everybody can kinda of agree with that because it Breaks into like other people have said like, hey, don't don't start fights if you don't have to. Don't hurt people if you don't have to. I think this one kind of encompasses that too. It's like, yep, we're gonna have like, we're predator. We're vampires are predator people. They're predators. We're gonna hurt people. We're gonna kill things. Yep. Don't do it unnecessarily. Like, if you have to, if you if you really got that itch, like our local assassino, uh. If you really got the itch to go ma- cap someone, go cap some go go cap someone raping. Go, go go out and catch someone doing something evil. I have a hypothetical scenario. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, I'm sorry, I forgot the the lady's name. Roz, what's her name? You gave us a dom- the domain. Oh, who are working for Miranda? You, you, uh, so Miranda is the underling. Um, you have not met her, but she has been referred to as either Miss Parker or Bonnie. Okay, hypothetically, if Bonnie tells us to kidnap someone's daughter who has nothing to do with anything except being the daughter of someone who's evil, do we do it or not? Well, we have to because it's the coterie or. Like, have to pay rent to the lady. Okay, so our position is more important than kidnapping. No, not for waffles, no. Mm-hmm. Like, if if Bon if if Bonnie Parker orders us down that we have to go kidnap someone a a just a completely random innocent child because it fits into some scheme of hers. And there's no justification for why it's happening. And they can't point it out. Waffles, personally, that would go against his tenets of he's not, it's not punishing, like, you're not punishing the guilty. You're not, we're not doing, we're not protecting someone who's, we're not doing the right thing. 
-hmm. So Waffles would have no part in kidnapping some random little girl. Yep. Or some random person's daughter. Like the, the, the Coterie might do it, but Waffles would not be part of that action, and that would be like one of those break moments. That, that'd be one of those like moments of self-reflection for the Coterie if the group decided to do that. Because Waffles would be like, I have no part in it, and yeah. I don't know if it, Waffles would even actively work against the group to do that. So think about, the case. think about these as basically another level to those convictions that you have for your character. Whenever you do something that may 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 go against your own personal convictions, but uphold the coterie, these coterie tenets basically that you're you're kind of discussing amongst each other, it's going to reduce the penalty on your humanity for for doing that. Yeah. Vice versa. If you do something that violates, you know, your your uh maybe the the coterie's convictions but upholds your own then it's the same thing it reduces that vice versa if you violate both your own personal convictions and the convictions of the coterie that makes that stain potentially even worse yeah like i get that because that's like with mine like that's why thinking about it and looking at my like conviction touched on conviction list if we were ordered by one of our one of the higher ups, one of the more status people in the city, to go kidnap someone. And like I said, why is there a is there a valid reason? Because me just doing that might break one of my touchstones or flaws. But is there going to be a way for that explains it to decide if Waffles does goes with the coterie and does it or doesn't do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. and is it kind of like what Vinny said in that coteries have like sp specific specializations so they basically get called to do like certain things? Uh, that can certainly play a part in it. Um, and, and like your convictions, these things can change over time. You can add to them, take them away, change them up as you need going forward. So these aren't exactly set in stone. Um, the benefit of these is that they're not tied to a touchstone. So if something happens to your touchstone, you're not going to lose the coterie version of these convictions. But that's, you know, mechanical mumbo-jumbo. To answer your original question, the kind of coterie that you are, they have different, like, terms for them. That mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, there, there's, like, a, a Cerberus co coterie, which is dedicated to protecting a certain place or a certain thing within a domain. And they have certain traits about them. Um, it's just a label, basically. It's how other categorization. Yeah. It's how other kindred may see your group, basically. Uh, but it, it doesn't necessarily have any bearing on on this part of it. Like, like that's something we'd earn later after we've done some jobs and gotten known. And be like, this is a group that's good at. Yeah. Hunt, hunting down information, or the, the, if if someone needs to find someone, this is the group to call to hunt. This is one of the groups we would call to hunt someone down. Yep. And just locate them, or yeah, yeah. It, you you can acquire those things either by a function of this is just the kind of work you end up doing, either on your own or because people are asking you to do it, um, or something a label that is applied to you by someone more powerful saying you do this like there's some that are dedicated like you are the the prince's personal attack dogs <laughs> or yeah, you know yeah. you you work for the baron doing anarch movement things or vice versa the the other thing i was wanting to add is uh like aside from like these tenants that we wanted to follow if we ever if there was ever a reason to think that one of us was was doing something that wouldn't mesh well with that or doing something that would intentionally put us all at risk that you know instead of uh like forming cliques and and you know speaking behind the scenes we should address those things as a group while we're all together mm. we can hold each other accountable in in that sense, and then you know, come up with a decision based on what we learned from that. That that, that will be the problem with kindred. 
is that they are inherently selfish creatures. So given time, you will probably step on each other's toes. Uh, no band lasts forever. A bit. Rolling Stones is still around. True. <laughs> Which one of us is Keith Richards, though? I, I guess I should say few <laughs> bands last forever. You'd be like Rush, where you like fall apart. <laughs> Together till they start dying. Yes. But yeah. I think. I think the three we have locked down. I mean, we could add one more for one too. But I think the three we have locked down, at least as a. a like Chris said, this is something that can change and be altered as we go, but I think we three have locked down as a good base structure for it. Like, yeah, basically these are our these are our baselines because it it is like let's in 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 the in the observation of the game. Let's be frank here. Like he said, we're all vampires, and we've only known each other for we've spent maybe seven hours together over the course of three days. Yeah, something like that. Wow, wild. wild. It's not like it's not like we're we're working together because someone said, "Hey, y'all are working together." We aren't working together because we know each other, or even necessarily like each other. Not that we dislike each other, but like, yes, I was just starting to warm up to you, waffles. <laughs> like we, yeah, we don't we don't know anything about anybody here. That's part of the fun right. and the challenge. Like. Yeah. I know one of you has a has a connection with uh, at least has some kind of at least emotional connection with gang members. I know one of you is from Las Vegas and he seems like a transient. I know Primrose has a sire she doesn't like but still has a hold on her. Mhm. Mm like as a as a kind like kind of out of character as a as a player looking at it I I look at it like I don't trust Felix. Victor might not be around very long because he might wander off, and Primrose very possibly could betray <laughs> us because her sire says, I want Waffles dead. Man. I have no clue about that, but that's entirely a possibility. And I've only known y'all for a few nights. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I distrust any of or doesn't mean I don't like any of y'all. It's just I don't trust any of you, yet I don't know you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But it's totally acceptable to just be cautious yeah i mean hell we're we're kind of moving in together and we've known each other for like 12 hours granted our uh basically like our roommate you know our get to know our roommates kind of thing happened over the past two nights right yeah i mean we've all we've beat people up together i mean we we're we're all new roommates. We don't know. We don't know who's gonna. We don't know who's gonna clean the bathroom. We don't know who's gonna eat our food out of the fridge, but we'll find out. <laughs> like one thing we do need to do, which I'm thinking about doing eventually, is we need to get Victor needs a. We we need. We're in San Antonio, Texas. Victor Victor needs a car. <laughs> yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> And it, and at this stage, because we have that dot of resources, it, only because it's been one night, there's no excuse for Victor not to have a car in a few weeks. I, unless he just doesn't want one. Yeah. You have a license? Uh, Trust me, you don't need a license. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just don't get pulled over. I'm not going to say I got my license renewed in November, and I hadn't had a license since 2015. <laughs> prior to that um and i'd been dry and i'm not going to admit that i was driving the entirety of that 10 years between november and then um but yeah like to be honest if you don't have a if if you want to get a license you need to have a mask yep uh the the level one merit mask because that's your basically your state identification papers so 
Mm. Uh, we have a merit. We have a dot in this mass now. That might include Victor having a driver's license now. At least that's going to pass if he gets pulled over by the San Antonio Police Department. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll probably need the license in order to actually get em employed. Yep. Or at least like a fake one. This is San Antonio, yeah. Texas. You don't need papers. <laughs> Yep. That's our next episode. The coterie goes to the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no! That's like three episodes. Right do, 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 do. So I started blasting. <laughs> Try not to fucking frenzy from just stupid shit happening at the DMV and wasting your goddamn time. <laughs> Actually, maybe we it would be like in and out because we'd go at nighttime when they're closed. It can't be in and out. We have to take them down. <laughs> Water coterie, just like you like it. Yeah. Oh god, that's that's pretty good. That's the name I think, right? What, water coterie. What a coterie. Oh, water coterie. <laughs> oh yes, and our short coat is whack. whack. Our first move in a few nights is to expand our domain to include Waterburger, just Waterburger. <laughs> hey, Miranda, listen to listen to listen. To, listen to, this, this is my proposition for you. Give us this little bubble on the other side of the road for our domain. <laughs> Trading meme. <laughs> like, I would like, or it's like, uh, like your offer, make our domain stretch to the Whataburger. Our offer, like, nothing, right? <laughs> we could talk about it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not in your domain, but it's also not not in your domain. So we can encroach upon it. Perhaps. Until someone else says this is ours. Because tactically all we're doing is if that if no one actually controls Whataburger, if it's let's say outside if there's no one that it's assigned no one actually work, claims it, then all we're doing is securing more territory for the person who we answer to in regards to this domain issue. Yeah. You're the vampiric versions of uh, squatters. You you just stay somewhere until it legally becomes yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's squatters rights. They can't kick you out. Someone, someone mentioned opening a business. Yep. We just you buy could have your burger. own Whataburger franchise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I hope we don't get a season and desist letter from Whataburger randomly. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that would ever happen, but I have, it would be very I funny. Have, I have dots in the finance skill. Mm, I can, something, can run a business. <laughs> something to think about spending that uh, sweet, sweet experience points for later. <laughs> Especially water, water finance. Water finance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. Yeah, um, sorry to derail. No, no, no. No, the, I... This was this was the thing I wanted to accomplish tonight. It has been accomplished. Uh, so at this point, we could go ahead and call it and and pick it back up with a little something a little bit more actiony next time. Yeah, Ooh, I like action. Can we can we say that uh, Felix brought me back near the the house and I went and like fetched the phone and. We oh, yeah. the you want to yeah, use the same the same trick where you don't take them directly to your your haven, but somewhere nearby yeah, where you I, can pop in, pop back out. I, I basically have him uh, say, or I'll, I'll I'll ask Felix to drop me off at Seventeenth and Armada, and then I'll from there I'll uh, kind of like disappear in an alley, and and I'm making my way back to making my way down where the town. phone is. Cool come back and I have the phone and I say, okay, we can bring this to Vinny. Yeah, let's go. Okay. So besides dropping the phone off with Vinny at Casablanca, is there any other pressing business that you feel you would like to accomplish this evening before we uh, break to let some time go by before something Not happens. some pressing. If, if we do, if well, we think we're going to do a little bit of downtime kind of situation after this one. Yep. Okay, I think I think a lot of what I would want to do would be kind of a more downtime. Like, what are what are you doing in the intervening nights? Which is just reconning, but that's stuff I could do in downtime. Like, I don't need to go rough, find a random drug dealer and beat him up tonight. Yeah, for day info. Yep. 
Yep, that's that's basically where we're gonna leave off with this evening, because it's gonna take him some time to to break into the phone and uh, get what uh -huh. information he can. It's like, what time? Uh, this whole process probably didn't take very long, so it's still probably maybe getting close to midnight-ish. Still fairly early. You said there's some drunk people around? Oh yeah, feeding rolls. Mm, in, yeah. in this part of town, uh, not quite as much. Around 2 a.m. is typically when the bars release and people really start getting out. I just don't know if we want to take care of our hunger points, because are we going to start next session getting another hunger point? Or is that like... Uh, uh, the, you start it with the chips. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You don't automatically get hungrier. It's a 50-50 it's a chance of getting hungry each time you do a rouse check. So far, my odds have been hungry both times. I don't know, man. It's a six up on a D10 in Warhammer Turns. <laughs> mm. Well, if we do downtime, I, I don't know how Chris is going to run downtime in this one, but a lot of times you might be able to squeeze in at least a, a, a roll in a downtime on top of doing something else to try and feed. Yes. Yeah, that is what it, it, it will come down to. Okay. Because well, I know, like, I think... One of us is like a three hunker right now, and it's like that one's gonna have to do it sooner rather than later. Yeah. And you have domain that you can go in and hunt for the first time without uh, anyone bothering you, anyone stopping you. Unless something really terrible happens and you get caught. So don't get caught. <laughs> so I can yeah, do that, technically? Yeah, absolutely. Is that what we want to end, end off the night doing, is seeing how you guys fare hunting in your new domain? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So while you await word from Livini, anyone who would like to can do, 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 go back to my cheat sheet here. Uh, you will roll. Uh, I think who who all is going hunting? Is it just Victor and I'm, Primrose? I'm gonna, right. make, I'm gonna make a stab at it. So oh. it happens. All right. So, uh, the alley cat squad because you are all alley cats. So you have the same check. It is your strength and brawl. Can I use my submission hold modifier thing? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. It was given to us by the alley cat feeding type. Yes. So yeah, I would assume that that would take effect. I will power. Felix, are you on hunting? Hello? Uh, no, I don't need to. I failed. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. Uh, not yet, anyways. <laughs> not yet, anyways. Not, not yet. Not yet. Take them when you can. Uh, any willpower reroll numerous times, or is it just one willpower reroll? No, for you can you can keep re you can keep spending willpower and rerolling until you have nothing left to reroll, or until you are uh, out of willpower. I believe I read that somewhere. So, 
All right. Oh, my willpower reroll has given me what I believe is the amount I need, which should be four. Based on the coterie sheet with feeding difficulty four. Yeah. I do believe so as well. Just reading up on a thing here real quick. I was gonna yeah, like everybody knows. Um like all the group. Uh, with willpower rerolls, you know that you resolve like depending on what your resolve is. I believe it you re recover a, n a number of willpower points equal to your resolve whenever you wake up. So if yes. you rolled like uh, seeing it as it's all public, like Primrose right here, I see she didn't roll necessarily so hot, but you could will you could spend a dot of willpower and reroll three of these dice and maybe do better, or two spend two willpower if you have that and let's say. Especially kind of metagaming to a degree, knowing that this is maybe the only die roll we're going to make tonight. But if you really need to feed, you can spend willpower to boost it up. Hmm. You just right click on the like on your roll. You right click on like one of the black die and just select the willpower reroll, and then you just select like three of them. Since because three is the max you can select, I would select three. With Primrose as an example, I would select three and then willpower reroll if I was going to do it, and see if you get more successes. You can't do it on the reds. I I I I don't believe you can re-roll the hunger die. Okay. And bam! With that re-roll, Primrose has five successes on her brawl. Nice. Oh. Cool. Victor is gonna on. Oh. That's not messy critic. Okay, good, good. Okay. So we did this wrong this time around, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll with what we have. Uh, okay. So you actually need to make a roll to see if you find a victim being an alley cat hunting the way that you do. And then you make uh, a check to see if your hunting attempt is successful. Okay. Uh just for, for future reference mostly for myself uh now actually reading these rules out in full um what's the role for finding wits and streetwise okay oh well giddy up and drive threaten me with a good time <laughs> Based on the potato establishment in the paper. Jesus. Jesus? No, I'm reading to myself, sorry. Wind means the vampires found prey and fed. Element according to the feeding table. Okay, sorry. It, it was really weirdly written. Uh -huh. And like the mechanical effects were kind of buried in the text. So I had to like really read it. Okay, cool. Uh yes, so all of you are successful in finding a uh, a victim for the night. Yep, on your own, uh, and you are able to to feed. I do need to make a check for all of you. Mm. But even Steven. Uh, 
Uh, Cream Rose. Let's start with uh, how much each of you take. We uh, we always have one hunger, right? So one red dot. Yes, you all. You always have at least one, unless you completely drain your victim. Okay, I just take the one. Let's take the one to take the edge off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is a ba basically it. It the human will. Other than having kind of a foggy memory of what exactly happened, getting jumped in an alleyway, but also feeling really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the kiss. Um, they they are otherwise unharmed. Uh, Victor, you've got a little bit more hunger to deal with. I want to try to satisfy two of them, but I also don't want to kill the victim. It just so happens that two is the maximum amount that you can take without risking harm to a human. Anything after that is a little bit iffy. Okay. That's okay. what I'll attempt to do. And waffles? I'm just going to take the one. Just take the one. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Priya, roll me a d10, please. Three. So which is number? Okay. Nothing happens. Nothing is that happens. good? Is that bad? Uh, it means that you... It, the particular person that you happen to feed on did not have any hint of any particular resonance. Mm. So. You all successfully feed for the evening and then go about your business waiting to hear more from... Victor, and, and probably starting to make whatever inroads you need to to set up your new place within your shared domain. And that is where we'll go ahead and call it for the evening. And we'll pick back up next time with uh, whatever Vinny has for you, if anything, and then we'll go from there and maybe see if you can actually get to this Hector Ruiz fellow who's hiding like a rat. If there's a rat, I could find him. True. He's, he is the, the worst kind of game. The most dangerous game. At least you think he is. <laughs> by all accounts. Uh, by all means, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 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 so, the game was trusting what? fart. Oh, question. No. <laughs> uh, just, just a really quick question regarding merits. Uh, you yeah. said three dots, three three points per dot. Yes. Is that like everything else where it's stacking? Like if you want to buy a dot two and something, it's going to cost six? Or is it just three per each one? It's three per each one, but you have to buy them in, in order. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, if you want to buy two dots worth of advantages, it's going to cost you six. One for the one. Okay. And the two. Yeah. But if you already had like a two dots in advantage, you want to buy a third die, it just costs you three. Yep. And things okay, like cool. lore sheets where you, you you don't have to buy them sequentially because each one is a different thing. Um, if you want to buy like a two dot lore sheet, you spend six to get those two dots yeah. and vice versa. I might look at some of those for fleshing out like what I want the character to be, like the full scope of them. Absolutely. Because I know, I know where I'm putting a couple of dots, because I, as I think up my backstory, I know a couple more dots I'm going to plug in around a few places yep. to fill in some holes and also just flesh out the character a little more, What I think he, where, where I think he would be at the start in the early level. Speaking of, go ahead and everybody take two experience points for uh, this oh. session. Eight experience points. Oh, oh. Flush with riches. 
Yeah. How much HP are we at? Two. Yeah. Well, um, that puts me back up to swanky five XP. Okay, good. Yeah, you are caught up on XP. I didn't remember if we talked about that or not when we did our thing. So. Alrighty. Well, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job, you guys. That's what I was trying to say. Good job to you as well. Good job. Good job, everybody. Oh.